J.K. Rowling. Whew. I know I'm a little late to the party on this one. Okay? I know I'm a little late. I'm going to open up with a bit of a disclaimer. I don't like Harry Potter. I just don't. I don't like young adult fiction. I don't like the protagonist being dropped into a mysterious world with fantastical rules where they can be an audience insert so you can finally imagine a world in which you're liked by other people and have a special purpose that goes beyond your mere subsistence existence, whether that be your Harry Potters or your Katniss Everdeens or whatever. Um, I'm just not a big fan of Harry Potter. But that's okay, because whether or not you're a fan of Harry Potter. I think we can all agree that the opinions on Harry Potter's creator are perhaps a little bit less uh, contentious. So J.K. Rowling has said some pretty dumb shit over the past uh, over the past few years on Twitter. Um, no one was a big fan of the actually Dumbledore is gay thing. I don't believe no nobody liked that. You know. Um, I think at one point she said that wizards used to piss and shit themselves and they would just magically wish away the piss and shit. That's, um, that's a good one right there. Um, but people got real fucking mad about this in particular. Okay, let's go over it. What could be wrong with this? Dress how you, whoa, 200,000. This is like a fucking Trump tweet. Dress how you please. Cool. Call yourself whatever you like. Cool. Sleep with any consenting adult who will have you. That's that. I'm in favor of everything that is being said. Live your best life in peace and security. Yes. But force women out of their jobs for stating that sex is real. I stand with Maya. This is not a drill. So people got really mad. Um, over that. And uh, why? Seriously, why? But force women out of their jobs for stating sex is not real. Well, I mean, should you be forcing people out of their jobs for stating that sex is real? I mean, sex is real. I haven't been fired. Maybe that's because I'm in America. Oh, well, I am self-employed. Um, I also used to work at a security job. Um, I think I mentioned at some point that sex was real back then, too. And I worked at a restaurant, and I worked at a frozen yogurt place, and... Well, actually, I don't think I was ever actually persecuted for saying that sex is real. So, this must not be a universal thing. Maybe in the States, it's okay. What, what does she mean by that, exactly? But force women out of their jobs for saying a group of people who that sex is real. Ill. Because they claim that's um that's just a, that's a really weird thing to say. Well, I will now part the curtain, my friend, uh, because the actual controversy here has nothing, nothing whatsoever, to do with sex being real. Let's dive in deep and learn why people are calling J.K. Rowling a transphobe. Which now substitute Israel for Italy, and you'll understand the dishonesty and absurdity of the argument. That one could be is something happening right now that, that I'm not aware of? of a Jewish state, but not anti wow, that's been playing for 40 seconds. Holy shit, how did that play? What the fuck? Dennis Prager, it's not your turn yet. I was so confused by what was happening in chat. Wait, how did that even... How did that even start playing? I didn't even open that tab. That is so weird. Okay, wait, guys, wait, that's so fucking weird. But I'm trying to make a YouTube video over here. Wait, hold on. What was the last thing I said before Dennis Prager invaded? Before Dennis the Menace came kicking down our sandcastle? I said she? Oh, excellent, gotcha. You were trying to figure out what she meant by sex existing? How long ago? All right, shut up. Shut the fuck up. We're resuming. We're going to get some silence. All right. Yeah, now where I part the curtain. Couldn't you argue Fully Cooley was young adult? DJ Zerative, if I didn't like you, I'd be banning you for that. 
So anyway, okay. I've worked a lot of jobs in my time. I've never actually been fired for saying sex is real. It didn't come up in conversation that often, mind you. Nobody ever like came up to me and asked, hey, is sex real? Is that true? Is sex real? Is it true? Or what are we referring to here? Are we referring to biological sex or the act of sex? What are we going? Uh, well, it never really happened to me, which made me think, hey, maybe. See, this is me. All, all individual detective work here. See, nobody else. I read no other Twitter threads for clarification or context. Maybe J.K. Rowling isn't actually talking about somebody being forced out of their job for saying sex is real. Maybe J.K. Rowling is dog whistling. Maybe J.K. Rowling, and we're going to get into this, is a fucking turf uh, or a transphobe, however you want to go about it. See, what we're looking at right here is J.K. Rowling expressing solidarity to somebody who was brutally kicked out of their job for, um, for, uh, for what? For acknowledging that sex exists? Well, no. Let's actually go into what happened, and I think part with the um, sort of obnoxious caterwheeling. So, <clears throat> Maya Forstater? Forstater? Was a person who worked as a consultant for the Center of Global Development, right? Easy enough, okay? So that's kind of like a humanitarian operation gig, you know? Center for Global Development. That's, I, you know, that's not nothing. It's something. And um, during the time that she worked there, she was kind of, uh, sort of, kind of a little bit opinionated on her private Twitter account. Um, we can go into some of the opinions that she shared in her private Twitter account, okay? So let's let's go over these real quick. I've got them here in front of me. Look at that. Super convenient. Super convenient. All right. Watch this. So. When using her personal Twitter account to tweet about her opposition to potential changes to the UK's Gender Recognition Act, she wrote, I share the concerns of at Fair Play Women that radically expanding the legal definition of women so it can include both males and females makes it a meaningless concept and will undermine women's rights and protections for vulnerable women and girls. She then added, some transgender people have cosmetic surgery, but most retain their birth genitals. Everyone's equality and safety should be protected, but women and girls lose out on privacy, safety, and fairness if males are allowed into changing rooms, dormitories, prisons, and sports teams. She would frequently and unmistakably refer to trans women as males when the law to which she was referring, the Gender Recognition Act, explicitly recognized trans women as female not male. So uh, in a long series of tweets, she repeatedly misgendered um, uh, Credit Suze Senior Director Pips Bunce, so like another public figure, who identifies as gender fluid, and she referred to them as a man who likes to express himself part of the week by wearing a dress, a part-time cross-dresser, and a white man who likes to dress in women's clothes. As part of that discussion, she also tweeted, I think male people are not women. And that person refers to themselves as she, her. Now, all of this was done by the Maya woman, okay? Now, this is a woman who works at a, basically a humanitarian sort of firm. You know, they're trying to help folks. And um, time came around in, uh, you know, in a uh, uh, couple months ago that her contract was coming up on expiring, her work stay there, you see. And the firm decided not to renew it. Maybe because one of their employees at a humanitarian firm was going on deranged Twitter rants about how uh, trans women are men and you're a deranged cross-dresser and we need to protect the women's spaces from the birth genitals of the transgender woman. They didn't renew the hiring contract. Um, at all, which is their right. I mean, of course it is. It's not they're firing her. They're just not bringing her on for another employment session. So this bitch, Maya, freaked out and took this complaint, took her belief that she was being persecuted for her beliefs over to uh, the uh, Brit Bonger like labor dispute board. You know, you go there. It's like we've got like a labor board here in America. If you're fired wrongfully, you can like, you know, talk to them over there. They got it, too. And she said, hey, it's my fucking freedom of speech. It's my gosh darn freedom of speech 
to be able to call trans women men. This is my philosophical belief. My gender critical views are a reflection of my philosophy and I'm expressing free speech when I engage in them. To which the court said, um, <clears throat> essentially, and I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but um, um, any philosophical views which, um, which pretend to you using language which is unquestionably discriminatory and hateful against a marginalized group may be, while a stemming from philosophy, nonetheless hateful. And therefore, the firm was completely in the right to terminate your contract. Mind you, they would have been in the right to terminate her contract even if she had said nothing. This is the most nothing whiny snowflake case in fucking history, folks. This is literally, she, they chose not to rehire her, and she assumed it was because they were biased against her. So she took it to court, which is something that she not only had like a, no basis or no grounds upon assuming, um, she um, was taking them to the labor board over a dispute for behavior which would have entitled them to firing her in all likelihood because of its overtly discriminatory content. She was wrong on two counts there. But it's in the vein of the turf of the transphobe to self-victimize like crazy because she spent months talking about how she was the victim of persecution, how women and girls everywhere are being subjected to the whims of the radical uh, anti-woman patriarchal men dressing up in dresses, what have you. This woman went crazy. So mind you, this isn't some like tightly contested court case where a public figure is narrowly overturned in a narrow dispute over the terminology she used in regards to public advocacy. This was a deranged woman whose term was not renewed with a firm, rightfully, who then, after months playing the pity party, saying she was being discriminated against with no legal grounds, took them to the labor dispute board and got smacked the fuck down. And that is what J.K. Rowling is referring to here. This is not J.K. Rowling expressing solidarity with a tightly uh, heated, contentious, you know, discussion on a particular issue. This is J.K. Rowling expressing solidarity with a bigot. She got not renewed for being a bigot. They had every right doing so. And her entire public advocacy has since been about bigotry. And that's what J.K. Rowling here is doing, too. And this you can tell because J.K. Rowling is cloaking her bigotry in the same euphemistic dog-whistling language that you would expect from somebody who knows they're being a bigot. Look, but force women out of their jobs for stating sex is real? Well, hold on. Nobody was forced out of their job. Her contract wasn't renewed. And even then, that contract not being re renewed was upheld by the labor board. And for stating sex is real? Mm, that isn't really what she was doing, actually. You can go over it here. She was, uh... I believe it is impossible to change sex or lose your sex. Girls grow up to be women, boys grow up to be men. No change of clothes or hairstyle, plastic surgery, accident or illness, no hormones, no force of will or social conditions, no declaration can turn a female person into a male or a male person into a female. She made her co-workers uncomfortable. She had a non-profit organization that was being placed in an untenable position because donors were no longer interested in giving them money because one of their representatives was going on unhinged transphobic rants on Twitter. Anybody could have been fired for this. Anybody could have been fired for this. And then, of course, you have the ruling for the courts. It's actually quite interesting how, um, how little nuance there is to it. When you actually look into the details, um, she could have been fired. She wasn't fired, but she could have been fired. Her behavior was overtly, um, uh, overtly, uh, unquestionably discriminatory and prejudiced. So again, we get back to J.K. Rowling here because I don't give a fuck about Maya over here. All right. J.K. Rowling is a TERF. TERF stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminist. What TERFs are, essentially, are fake feminists. They tend to be born of the second wave. There are a ton of TERFs in England for some fucking reason. And what they tend to be are feminists who believe in the, uh, the dynamic between men and women are a product of biological prescriptivism. The reason women are persecuted in society is because of their biological inferiority. They're weak. They are susceptible to the whims of the penis. The penis is dangerous and weaponized against them, and that um, they need to be protected against those who have said penises or benefit from the socialization that men typically experience, which would be trans women. Some trans women have penises, you know, not all of them, of course, but a lot of them do. So... 
that's what a turf is. And a lot of you may think that it's not a big deal that J.K. Rowling's a turf. I imagine it's pretty disappointing that one of the most famous novels, novel series, ever written, um, a novel series which has no doubt been enjoyed by literally millions of transgender people, um, was written by a bigot who will lie, because this is a lie right here. This right here, for stating sex is real? No. Her contract was not renewed because of her unprofessional and discriminatory behavior. That's not what this is. That J.K. Rowling would lie to defend an overt transphobe and essentially send the message to millions that this whimsical writer of fancy and Britbonger, you know, uh, Britbonger uh, uh, sensibilities is willing to lie and to go up to bat for, um, uh, uh, for, for somebody whose case is so unbelievably one-sided. And that's what we got from J.K. Rowling. J.K. Rowling's a transphobe. And you know they're cowards, too, because they always phrase their criticisms euphemistically like this. If she was being honest, she would have said, live out your best life in peace of security, but don't renew contract, but renew contract, <laughs> um, but renew contracts for people who place their business in awkward positions by being discriminatory and unprofessional or something like that, which nobody would have taken seriously. But that's probably the most fair and unbiased reading that you could have gotten from the situation. So, yeah, that's what you get from J.K. Rowling. Honestly, fuck J.K. Rowling. Fuck, I don't like Harry Potter either. Fuck J.K. Rowling and fuck Harry Potter. Fuck J.K. Rowling for making Harry Potter and condemning the creativity and intelligence of literally millions of people to the shallow fantasy world that is poorly written and the characters have no depth. And also fuck all of you. And it's unoriginal and fuck you.